Hey, welcome to chapter 19. This is the cardiovascular system. Remember we talked about how the cardiovascular system is made up of three features. Well, now we're onto the heart or the pump as we like to call it. So today we're gonna identify and describe the interior and exterior parts of the heart. We're gonna describe the path of the blood through the cardiac circus, circuits, not circus. And we're gonna describe the size, shape, and location of the heart. So where is the heart itself? So the heart is actually located within the mediastinum. The mediastinum is in the center center of the chest, okay? You can see it right here. It's right between the lungs. There's the mediastinum, okay? Your heart is about the size of your fist, and it sits to the left side, and it goes from the second rib all the way to the fifth intercostal space, which is the space between your ribs. Your esophagus sits behind your heart, okay? There's a serous membrane of the heart. So what we have here is this is the parietal pericardium, Parietal pericardium means that it's going to be toward the outside. And then we have the visceral pericardium. Visceral means on the organ itself, okay? And so we also can call that visceral pericardium. Sometimes it's called the epicardium because it's surrounding the heart itself. Between the two, we have what's called the pericardial cavity. Within the pericardial cavity, we have the serous fluid. What do we need that serous fluid for? We need it to reduce friction, okay? Because if your heart was pumping constantly as it is, every time it moved, it would sort of be rubbing against your body, right? The visceral pericardium would be rubbing against the parietal pericardium, and it might leave a hole, right? So that doesn't happen because of that serous fluid. So the outermost layer of the heart is the epicardium. Um, it's also, again, called that visceral pericardium, and it's made out of simple squamous epithelium. The middle layer is the myocardium. What does myo mean? It means muscle. So this is a muscular part of your heart. It's responsible for contraction. And then the innermost is going to be the endocardium. And the endocardium is going to line those heart chambers. It's made out of simple squamous epithelium. And it also helps to prevent friction from our swirling blood within the chambers. Okay. These are some external structures of the heart. You can actually see these great vessels coming out of the heart. Okay. So this is the pulmonary trunk right here. This is our superior and our inferior vena cava. This is the blood returning back, okay? So this is deoxygenated blood coming back. And one thing that you should know here, look at this. These are pulmonary arteries. Look at that, pulmonary arteries. I feel like arteries, aren't they always red? They are, but arteries in and of itself actually means to move away from the heart and veins return back to the heart, okay? So these arteries that are going away from the heart, they're actually taking that deoxygenated blood away from the heart. They're taking it to the lungs so that it can be oxygenated. And then it's gonna come back in once oxygenated through those pulmonary veins, okay? So they arrive back in. Um, so let's talk a little bit about these. So this is the aortic arch. So once we've had all that oxygenated blood and we pump, okay, we're going to pump it through the aortic arch and then we're going to go into three vessels. So we have this left subclavian artery and the left common carotid artery. The left subclavian is actually going to go under your clavicle. Okay, that's what subclavian means. And the common carotid is going to go up through your neck into your brain. Then we have the brachiocephalic trunk right here. The brachiocephalic trunk is going to split into the right subclavian and the right common carotid artery. Okay. So one other thing that I'd like to show you here is that we have different parts of the heart. We have the atrium. Okay and the ventricles, okay? So right here, this is the right atrium. The right atrium on the inside, it's called an atrium. On the outside, it's actually called the auricle, okay? Here is the auricle of the left atrium. This would be the auricle of the right atrium, okay? And then we have our left ventricle and our right ventricle, okay? And this is the apex of the heart right here. Okay? You have a connection between our aortic arch and our a pulmonary trunk, it's called the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay. This is the back surface of the heart. So you can really see these are the pulmonary veins. There's that inferior vena cava, 
the superior vena cava, bringing back the deoxygenated blood from the body into the right atrium. Okay. On the back of the heart, you have this really cool vein. It's called the great cardiac vein and the coronary sinus. This is looking inside of the heart. So this is that right atrium. Within the right atrium, you have a valve. This is called the tricuspid valve. We always try before we buy. Okay. So on this side, the right side, we have our tricuspid. And then on this side, we have our bicuspid. The bicuspid is also called the mitral valve. You'll see that these valves are actually connected in with what are called chordae tendinae. And those are attached into our papillary muscles. Now, those are actually going to help with um, sort of keeping the blood flowing in one direction through these valves. Okay? So we have that deoxygenated blood coming in through the inferior and the superior vena cava into the right atrium. When the heart then is going to pump, we're going to get this opening of our tricuspid valve the same time we open over here, but we're just following it one place right now. Okay, So when that happens, we're actually going to get the blood flowing down into the right ventricle. Okay, Now, once we pump our heart, okay, we're going to open up what are called the semilunar valves. Okay? We have an aortic semilunar valve that you can sort of see right here, and then you have a pulmonary semilunar valve right here. Okay, Now, when the ventricles contract in, the blood is going to flow up through the pulmonary trunk and it's going to go into the pulmonary arteries to go to the lungs. Okay? Once it gets to the lungs, it's going to drop off the carbon dioxide and it's going to pick up the oxygen and we're going to have it come back in to our left atrium through the left and right pulmonary veins. Okay? Now it's going to travel down through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. Now when the heart pumps, we're going to go up through the aortic valve, through the aorta, and then out through the vessels to get to the rest of the body. Okay. So here you can see those internal heart structures. So these are those chordae tendinae along with those papillary muscles, and then we also have what is called trabeculae carnae. Okay. The chordae tendinae and the papillary muscles are really involved with that workings of those AV valves to help the blood flow in one direction. The trabeculae carnae in the apex of those ventricles helps us to mobilize dependent blood so that it doesn't clot. Okay. We have different valves within the heart. I've already talked about them a little bit. We have the tricuspid and the bicuspid. Okay. These tricuspid and bicuspid are called atrioventricular valves, and that's because they go from the atria into the ventricles. We also have the semilunar valves. So sem semilunar valves are anchored to our great vessels. The great vessels are the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Okay. So here we can see those um, heart valves, right? Here's the tricuspid and the bicuspid. Bicuspid, again, is also called the mitral valve. Then we have the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve right there. So we have what's called diastole and we have systole. Okay, you've heard of this when we talked when you've maybe talked about blood pressure. Okay, so diastole means that our ventricles are actually relaxed and we have our AV valves open, meaning that the blood is able to flow through gravity from the atria down through the ventricles. But our semilunar valves are closed. Okay, so our AV valves can open by our atrial wall pressure and then the gravity again into the ventricles. The semilunar valves are closed because we have what's called a back pressure of the blood within those great vessels. And then we have systole, and systole is our top number of blood pressure. This is when we've got the highest of pressure because this is when our ventricles contract together. Okay. So those ventricles contract, and when the ventricles contract, the AV valves are going to close because we don't want the blood to go back up into the atria, right? We don't want it to go back in that direction. So the papillary muscles will contract, and they'll pull on those chordae tendinae. That's going to pull those AV valve cusps closed, and the force of that contraction is going to push the blood through those semilunar valves they're going to open so we can force the blood out to the rest of the body.
So here's sort of our blood flow happening through the heart, okay? Now, some things to keep in mind is that we talk about this sort of in a process, but both the ventricles actually contract together, okay? Um, and so just keep that in mind as we go through, right? So the blood's going to enter the right atrium from our superior inferior vena cava. Here are those vena cava right here. Okay. Once um, there, remember that during, um, let's back up. Okay. Here is diastole, right? So during diastole, which is our sort of relaxed phase, this would be the lower number of blood pressure. Maybe if you've heard blood pressure as 120 over 80, it's systole over diastole. So we're in our relaxed state. When that happens, our right AV valve, our tricuspid valve is open and the blood is flowing down. The same time that this is happening, the blood is flowing down into the left ventricle as well, okay? So this is deoxygenated blood. It's flowing down into the right ventricle, okay? Then when, um, the heart actually contracts or those ventricles contract. Remember those papillary muscles are going to pull. It's going to close up those tricuspid and our bicuspid valve. Okay? And we're going to force the semilunar valves open. So this is then going to force the blood up into our pulmonary arteries. So we're moving away from the heart. Okay. The blood's going to go to our right and left pulmonary arteries to the lungs. It's going to unload carbon dioxide and load up on oxygen. And then the blood is going to return from the lungs via our pulmonary veins, is what it should say right here on number six, just FYI, pulmonary veins, to our left atrium right there. Okay. Now, remember, this is happening at the same stage as this, right? So we're relaxed again okay, into our diastole stage. So we're relaxed, here we go, All right? So we're open and we're relaxed. So the blood is slowing down into our left ventricle, okay? Now, the force happens, right? So we contract those right and left ventricles again, and that's gonna force the blood up. Now this is oxygenated blood because it's come back from the lungs. It's going to go up into the aorta, and then we're going to distribute it all to all of the tissues within the body. It's going to unload our oxygen. It's going to load back up on carbon dioxide, and then we're going to come back and return here to our veins. So arteries are carrying generally oxygenated blood, except in the case of the pulmonary arteries and veins, okay? Because arteries really means away from the heart and veins are the ones that are carrying it back. Fetal circulation is just a little bit different because the blood is actually oxygenated by the placenta. It's not actually happening through the lungs themselves. So the umbilical vein is gonna carry oxygenated blood into the inferior vena cava along with our venous blood from the fetus's body. So what's the difference between a systemic and a pulmonary circulation? Pulmonary means lungs. Okay, so here's that pulmonary circuit right here. Most of the time, again, arteries are carrying the blood away from the heart, veins are carrying the blood back to the heart, um, except in the case of those pulmonary circuit, okay? So pulmonary circulation, remember that's when we're gonna get to the lungs so we can get oxygenated and then come back. And then systemic circulation is where we're going to pump that oxygenated blood out to the body tissues and then come back. We also have to have coronary circulation, meaning that we have to be able to um, get oxygenated blood to our heart to be used, right? So we have what are called coronary arteries, and the coronary arteries are going to arise from the base of the aorta, and they supply the blood to the myocardium. So we have a right coronary artery and a left main coronary artery. We also have a circumflex artery that sort of goes around the heart. We have anterior descending arteries as well. So the right coronary artery is going to follow around the coronary sulcus. The sulcus is a sort of a deep indentation, and it's going to feed the right side of the heart. It has two branches to it. It has marginal arteries, and then it has the posterior interventricular artery, okay, meaning that it's going to go sort of between the ventricles. And after the blood reaches the myocardium, it gets drained by the left and the right coronary veins, and then it goes into the coronary sinus. And from the coronary sinus, it can be returned into the um, right atrium. So 
Don't forget to review those layers of the heart and the blood flow through the heart. You should definitely be able to do that on your own as well as to be able to label the heart diagram. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Thank you.